Okay, this this is the question. This one? Okay. okay. And yes. uh, there is also a slight change. Do you want to plug it? System, so <laughs> yeah. probably I will fail, so. <laughs> yeah. That's better? Uh, I'm very proud of this workshop, and um, okay. this, this colloquium is also part of the uh, ICPS IAC joint program. And uh, we are very fortunate to have uh, Mr. Masaru Shibata of IACP uh, talking to us um, about uh, numerical simulations of uh, binaries involving clusters. As you know, Masaru is one of the world's experts in this area and uh, the leader of the world leading group uh, in numerical computing. Thank you. So it is my great pleasure to give a seminar here, and I'd like to thank our organizers for giving me an opportunity for uh, presenting, presenting uh, our latest uh, studies for the binary Newton star merger and the black hole Newton star merger. Uh, this is a, a, a plan for this talk, and after a brief introduction, I'll talk on the uh, gravitational waves from uh, binary Newton star and black hole Newton star binary, and uh, and uh, discuss the possibility uh, to extract the uh, equation of state of neutron star, which is still fairly known. And uh, then, so uh, I'd like to uh, present uh, uh, some uh, uh, couple of uh, simulations result for the merger as a high energy phenomena, so the range of gamma levels. So, uh, and the new mega relativity study play an important role for exploring uh, such possibility. And finally, so I'd like to talk on the uh, Electromagnetic counterparts of a binary Newton star merger. Uh, this is a very hot topic uh, in, uh, in a recent year, and uh, I'd like to give uh, some uh, introductory talk on this. Okay, so uh, this is a, a list of the uh, observed uh, binary neutron stars in our galaxy, and uh, there are five binary neutron stars observed in our galaxy which uh, merge within the Hubble time. So this is a, a time scale to the merger, and the typical time scale is uh, about 100 million years or uh, 1,000 million years. And then, yeah, so we know at least five, uh, we know there are five binary neutron stars which will merge in a galaxy, and uh, this suggests that the uh, uh, merger of binary neutron star could be a, a frequent uh, phenomena in the universe. And uh, indeed, uh, statistical studies have shown that, uh, uh, have estimated that the uh, uh, galactic merger rate in a galaxy is uh, about one every 10,000 uh, years or to the, uh, every million years. And this means that a uh, merger in the universe will occur about 100,000 to uh, 10 million every years. So this means that the event rate for the advanced lag and the advanced lag and the Kagura, so gravitational wave detector, uh, will be a uh, uh, one to hundred years. So this activates a, a field of a uh, uh, study of the binary neutron star merger and uh, also black hole neutron star merger. So we black hole neutron star binary have not been yet observed, but uh, uh, according to the scenario of the formation of binary neutron stars, we may expect that uh, as high uh, frequency, uh, high, so as a so event rate may be as high as the uh, binary neutron star case. Okay, so uh, this is a list. That this is a reason why so binary neutron stars and the black holes are important and interesting. Uh, I think that there are at least four uh, motivations for studying the this system. Uh, one is that, uh, as I said uh, in the previous slide, so it's a uh, most promising source of gravitational waves. And also, uh, they are the uh, uh, invariable, so, so brand new laboratory for studying the high density nuclear matter. So I, I will uh, explain the detail of this uh, in the following slides. And also, these are uh, uh, believed to be a uh, uh, central range of short hard gamma ray burst. And also, also, finally, so besides the short hard gamma ray burst, in the, during the merger, uh, such uh, binary system could emit a, a strong transient ele electromagnetic signals, and uh, uh, this is also the uh, interest topic in astronomy. Okay, so, in you, so what is important for me and uh, for other people in numerical relativity is that uh, for all these uh, four topics, uh, numerical relativity play an important role. So as a result now, so numerical relativists 
are, are working in these topics actively. Okay, so I'll talk on, from now, so I'll talk on the three topics. So first is uh, uh, gravitational waves from binary neutron star mergers and the black hole neutron star mergers and uh, uh, equation of state of neutron stars. So first of all, uh, let me remind you that how binary neutron star evolves and merge. Uh, this is a, a typical scenario for the merger of binary neutron stars. And any anyway, so binary neutron stars uh, would be formed as a result of, uh, to, as a result of uh, evolution of the mass, two massive stars or uh, capture in the globular clusters from two neutron stars. And then anyway, so after the formation of binary neutron stars, it evolves adiabatically, so by, by the emission of gravitational waves. Adiabatically means that the uh, emission time scale of a gravitational wave is uh, much, much longer than the orbital period. So this means that the uh, binary, so orbital radius binary decrease gradually, gradually, so slowly uh, during the merger. But anyway, so after uh, 100 million years or 1,000 million years, uh, binary eventually merge. And uh, so and in the final coalescing phase, is uh, important for uh, detection of gravitational waves. And then, yeah, so up to uh, uh, 40 or 50 kilometers of orbital radius, uh, binary, e each component of binary may be considered as the point particle because uh, uh, orbital radius R, small r, is much, much uh, larger than uh, large r. Large r denotes a uh, stellar radius. But uh, after, the, uh, after the this uh, phase, so I mean that uh, if the orbital separation is smaller than the uh, about 50 kilometer, 50 kilometer means that uh, about four times of stellar radii, uh, radii, uh, R is about 10 kilometer to 15 kilometer, then so uh, tidal deformation effect become important. So, and after that, so hydrodynamics play an important role in the major phase. And then you saw uh, soon after this phase, major set in, and at the major uh, approximate a value of the frequency is about one kilohertz. So this is uh, just uh, using the uh, detection band of the uh, advanced rig and advanced rig and Kagura. And the uh, fact is interesting uh, in this major scenario is that uh, uh, there are two possibilities. Uh, one is that uh, uh, black hole is simply formed just after the merger. Uh, this happens if the total mass of neutron star is very large. So much, much, so mass is much larger than the uh, maximum mass of neutron star black hole should be formed soon after the merger. Or uh, equation of state yes, is uh, too soft. So I mean that if pressure is too low, so uh, self-gravity cannot be supported by pressure and the black hole is formed. And so also just, uh, we have the other possibilities. The other possibility is that uh, the so-called massive neutron star is formed. Uh, this, could be, could, this could occur because that, uh, after the merger, uh, merged object has a uh, uh, high angular momentum, so which is from the uh, orbital angular momentum. As a result, uh, formed massive neutron star is rapidly spinning, and then so such a, a rapid <coughs> rotation enhances the centrifugal force, and the uh, neutron star may not collapse to the black hole. But for this case, so we need a very stiff equation of state. If the equation of state is soft, uh, Pressure is, is, pressure is not high enough to support the, such a massive neutron star. Anyway, so these, there are two cases, and the uh, uh, scenario depends on the, strongly depends on the uh, equation of state and the total mass for the binary neutron star. So also, a similar evolution uh, scenario can be constructed for black hole neutron star binary. And also, after the two supernovae, or by uh, dynamical capture, black hole neutron star, black hole neutron star would be formed. And then, so, it evolves due to the emission of gravitational waves, and eventually merge. And also, there are two possibilities for this merger case. Uh, for one case, uh, neutron star is uh, simply swallowed by the black hole. So this is the case one. And the other case is that uh, before the neutron star is uh, fall into the black hole, uh, black hole is tidally disrupted. And then uh, tidal disrupted matter, uh, 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 at least a part of tidally disrupted matter form a disk like this. So in it, there are two possibilities. And uh, case one is the case if the neutron star mass, uh, neutron star radius is very, very small. In this case, uh, tidal disruption 
does not occur, or black hole mass is too large. So this means that the black hole, uh, black hole radius is very large, and the uh, neutron star is simply swallowed by the black hole. Uh, or uh, small spin. So I, I will, that I will, uh, I will talk the details of this uh, condition later, anyway. And uh, also, so here, so this happens if, I, I say that if this happens if a neutron star radius is small. So th in this case, tidal disruption, a uh, tidal uh, effect is not very large. And this means that the uh, uh, so final fate also depends on the equation of state. And also spin and mass and so on. So anyway, so for, the, for both cases, uh, equation of state plays an important role for, fi for determining the uh, final phase. But uh, 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 exact equation of state for neutron star matters is, is still fairly known. Uh, however, so latest discoveries are strongly constrain the uh, possible equation of state. So these are uh, latest, latest discovery of uh, uh, neutron stars. Uh, this has a, uh, about a, both has about two solar mass. And this means that uh, uh, any equation of state uh, should explain that this mass. But for example, for this type of equation of state, so maximum mass is at most 1.5 or 1.6 and 1.8. So these cannot explain these uh, new discoveries. So this means that uh, these, uh, these uh, very soft equation of states are excluded. Uh, however, uh, there are ma still many, many uh, candidate equation of state like this. And uh, we don't know wh which one is the correct one as an equation of state. The main reason is that uh, we don't know the uh, radius. So, so usually we say that the neutron star radius is uh, between 10 to uh, 15 kilometers, but uh, we don't know that exact value. As a result, we, don't know, we, we cannot uh, determine the exact equation of state. So anyway, so however, uh, as I said uh, in the previous slide here, so the condition for tidal disruption depends strongly on the radius. So this means that uh, by observing the, uh, for example, the black hole neutron star binary by some uh, signals like uh, gravitational waves, uh, we will be able to constrain the equation of state. So this is an a, a interest a possibility for detection of the gravitational waves to, in, to constrain the equation of state. Yes. Pardon? Please mention that constraint again. I, I don't, sorry, so. And you mentioned the constraint. Constraint, this one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the, the, these are also uh, discovered, these are neutron stars, discovered in the neutron star white dwarf binary. And by observing white, white dwarf and the neutrons are both, both, both stars, so we can determine the, the mass of uh, neutron stars within small, uh, error, then, then so these, uh, these give a very strong constraint for the equation state. Okay, so <coughs> from now, so I will show you a numerical relativity result. Uh, this is an uh, animation for a binary neutron star of mass, 1.35, 1 1.75 1 neutron stars, with a full equation state. And uh, four, four, so four equation of state is, uh, for example, this is uh, APR4 uh, with a uh, radius is about 11 kilometer, and in this case, uh, radius is uh, 12, about 12 kilometer, and uh, 13 and 14 kilometer, and so on. So anyway, so uh, this is a relatively soft equation of state, and this is a so very stiff equation of state. So stiff means that the uh, radius is very large. And anyway, so this shows that after the merger, uh, black hole is not formed. And uh, massive neutron star is formed, so universally, with uh, this uh, typical mass. But these are unstable, isn't it? These uh, hypermassive neutron stars, are they stable? Uh, it's uh, it's uh, tentatively stable, but eventually unstable. For, for example, so in this case, uh, black hole is eventually formed. Uh, this is due to the emission of gravitational waves and uh, so transfer of the angular momentum outward. So, so anyway, so I will show you again. <laughs> so what is the time scale over which these uh, 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 depends on the uh, mass and uh, equation of state and uh, so on, so on. So uh, it should be, it may be a 10 millisecond, but it may be also one second, and it may be a thousand second. It depends on the equation of state. So for this sort of stiffer equation of state? Uh, in this case, uh, hypermassive, it's, it's a not a hypermassive neutron star, it's a simple massive neutron star, it will be stable. Because in this case, the equation of state is very, very stiff. 
uh, with this equation of state, uh, 2.7 solar mass neutron star can be supported even without the uh, rotation. So in this case, uh, uh, hyper, not, not hyper, so it's a massive neutron star is stable. But if you take the initial neutron star, say, to 1.5, then? Yeah, so in this case, uh, all of them collapse the black hole soon. So, so this means that the total mass is very important parameter. But, but anyway, so 1.5 solar mass neutron star is, has not been detected in the binary system. So, yeah, 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 so, it, so typical mass of the binary neutron star is uh, in a very small range. So typical mass is uh, 1.35. So with such a mass, uh, uh, typical outcome of the merger is a uh, uh, massive neutron star. So this means that uh, for canonical mass, or typical mass, so typical mass is that uh, the total mass is a uh, 2.7 solar mass, uh, case two is a... Uh, so these kind of stiff equational states have not been ruled out, have they? Uh, no. No, 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 no. So will that give us some gravitational signature when this case two happens? I, I, I will talk to you, I will talk to you now, so from now, yeah. Anyway, so, so this is what <laughs> okay. Okay, so anyway, so, so important point is that uh, massive neutron star is often formed after the merger of binary neutron star with canonical mass. And for such case, uh, uh, gravitational wave becomes something like this. So this is a chap signal. So this uh, gravitational waves are emitted during the in spiral of two neutron stars. And uh, this is a uh, gravitational waves from ma massive neutron star. So massive neutron star is uh, uh, rapidly rotating and also usually it has a uh, uh, ellipticity. So as a result, strong gravitational waves are emitted like this. And uh, so anyway, so there are two interesting gravitational waveforms. Uh, one is a uh, uh, gravitational waveform from the uh, rate in spiral stage, so for which uh, frequency is about 100 to uh, 1 kilohertz. And the other is a uh, uh, gravitational wave from a uh, massive neutron stars here. So in, for this case, uh, gr frequency is uh, between 2 and uh, 4 kilohertz. Anyway, so these gravitational waves reflect the equation of state, as I said in the following, as I say in the following. Okay, so first, uh, I, I will talk, talk on this, this gravitation waves. And uh, for this phase, uh, tidal effects play an important role. And uh, what I, I mean is the following. Is, so, the, anyway, so in the cross binary system, uh, tidal deformation occurs like this. So, so, so even if the, uh, each star is uh, spherical at the distant orbit, by the tidal deformation effect, star becomes something like this, ellipsoidal. Then, so, so attractive force between two stars change uh, as follows. So, in, so by this deformation, a uh, quadrilateral pole is induced. As a result, uh, additional uh, potential appear like this. Uh, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, related to the tidal deformation and the quadrilateral potential. And then, so this uh, bring us bring this system uh, uh, additional, additional attractive force. And uh, this is negligible because uh, uh, this, is, uh, this has a R to 6. So this means that for a distant orbit, this is negligible. negligible. But in the uh, close orbit, it cannot be neglected. The reason is that uh, uh, the, the C is uh, fairly large for this system. Uh, C is, uh, roughly speaking, C is proportional to the M. M is a total mass, and R is a spiral radius, R to 5. So now, if R is uh, as small as uh, M, so this is negligible even at the merger. But uh, for neutron star, R is much larger than the radius of the uh, black hole. So typical radius is about five to eight times of uh, 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 stellar mass. And then, so this means that, uh, and uh, also, so I should say that uh, uh, merger occurs at small R is uh, approximately twice of large R. So this means that uh, at such uh, close orbit, this term is not uh, very small. So this term could be a 10% a of the uh, leading term. So as a result, uh, tidal deformation effects play, uh, tidal deformation affects uh, uh, evolution of so orbital motion of the binary system. As a result, gravitational wave forms are modified. Uh, this is an uh, uh, example for such a modification. And here, I show the uh, gravitational waveform using a Taylor T4 
combination. So this is a black line. And uh, less three lines shows the uh, uh, gravitational waves uh, in which uh, tidal effects are included. And then if for blue one, so radius is larger. And as a result, tidal deformation effect is stronger. And uh, for red line, uh, tidal def deformation effect is less important. And then you so, as so it's not easy to see. But then you so you can see that uh, uh, so deviation of the wave form. For example, the so blue one uh, deviates from the uh, black one faster, earlier. So this is because the, because the tidal deformation effect plays an important role for a more distant orbit. And then uh, by detecting this deviation, uh, it may be possible to constrain the equation of state. So, so after this tidal there is no signal at all? Uh, so uh, so anyway, so I, I yeah, stopped the uh, calculation uh, okay. at, at the contact of two neutron stars. Yeah. Oh, this is, these are uh, post-neutral This is a post TT4, TT4 plus T tidal deformation effect, yeah. And why would they stop at the earlier if you increase the gradient? Because they start touching. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so if we perform a very accurate simulation, so similar, similar results can be obtained. Yeah. Anyway, so, and, uh, and also using uh, uh, eff effective one body, uh, equation motion, Damo and Naga and their collaborator performed a detailed study for, th for the possibility of the extracting the uh, equation of state from the binary neutron star merger. And uh, so I skipped the uh, detail. But anyway, so they found that uh, if, if the uh, signal to noise ratio of a gravitational wave for further inspiral phase is larger than 16, so they find that the uh, equ equation of state can be constrained, constrained uh, by detecting this type of gravitational wave. So this is a one in, very important and interesting possibility for constraining the equation of state using gravitational wave detection. And the other is a uh, gravity, the other interesting phase. The, the yeah. previous slide, um, lack of signal, um, what's the different type of detector that was being used? Uh, Ad advanced LIGO. <coughs> advanced LIGO and that. Ah, I think it's not broadband. It's a, it's a designed. It's a designed. So because of the, uh, so the point is that for this case, uh, frequency is between 100 hertz to 1 kilohertz. So broadband detector is not very important for detecting this type of gravitational wave. Okay. Yeah. So it is the, basically the, the cumulative effect. That yeah, accumulated effect. So accumulated very small effect is very important. Okay. And the other important and interesting phase is a uh, uh, hypermassive, so massive neutron star phase. And also, this, this is a uh, uh, gravitational wave forms for, for different equation of state. Uh, this is for a uh, relatively soft equation of state, and uh, this is for a uh, very stiff equation of state. And uh, uh, you can see that, uh, uh, the, uh, the, so th this is an inspiral waveform, and uh, here is a waveform from a hypermassive neutron star. And you can see that the uh, waveform of the hypermassive neutron star depends strongly on the equation of state. And uh, what is most important is that the uh, frequency. Uh, frequency for soft case is uh, rather high. So for this case, uh, this is a frequency as a function of retarded time. And the frequency for this case is about 3.3 uh, or 3.5 kilohertz. But for stiff equation of state with which uh, radius is larger, uh, frequency is rather small. In this case, 2 kilohertz. So you see this uh, signal amplitude goes down and then goes up. Is uh, because of the pul pulsational modes in the new? Yes, yeah, so this, is, this is by pulsation. But anyway, so, so uh, amplitude uh, gradually down. And this is, this is due to the fact that uh, during, during the uh, hypermassive neutron sun case, so it interacts with the uh, envelope. Yeah. And the uh, angular momentum is transferred to the envelope. And as a result, uh, spin of the hypermassive neutron star decrease, and then so amplitude decrease. Uh, so it, but it, it sort of goes down first and then picks up. So it, it, in this case, it's it, 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 it not uh, this one. Yeah. Uh, at that time, so it becomes very compact and uh, so fairly spherical. Okay. Then so it expands and uh, ellipsoid is formed. Yeah. If you take a look at the uh, uh, animation very carefully, you, you will find that uh, I don't have time to show. Anyway, so. Oh, yeah. How are you setting 
Oh, so in this case, uh, equation of state is very stiff. So hypermass neutron star is that uh, uh, star in which that the mass is uh, much larger than the maximum mass of a spherical neutron star. But for this case, yeah, for this case, uh, two-point solar mass is just smaller than the maximum mass of a spherical neutron star. Yeah, so yeah. So anyway, so this difference is uh, clearly seen the Fourier spectrum. Uh, this is a uh, Fourier spectrum as a function of the uh, f, and uh, this is a result for four equation of state. And uh, you see that uh, uh, so because uh, it's a uh, uh, quasi periodic oscillation, uh, we always find a uh, peak like this, and the peak frequency depends strongly on the uh, equation of state. And for for this case, uh, equation of state is very stiff, but and for this case, equation of state is uh, relatively soft. And then, so amplitude, this is because of this uh, peak uh, frequency is rather high, uh, it's not e probably it's not easy to detect by advanced arrival and so on and so on. But uh, if uh, so a major fortunately okay, for example, is in the radius of uh, uh, 30 megapascal or something like that, so such gravitation wave will be detected and uh, uh, if we can detect a gravitation wave like this, so we can constrain the equation state. So, yeah, so this is a, a relation of the peak frequency as a function of the uh, stellar radius of the, in this case, which is a radius of 1.6 solar mass neutron star, following the work by uh, Bernstein Yanka. And uh, anyway, so uh, which, which, which is a very clear correlation between the peak frequency and the stellar radius. So this means that uh, if peak frequency is uh, measured, for example, if we, the peak frequency is uh, about 2.95 uh, kilohertz, something like this, so we can constrain the radius of this mass star within the one kilometer. So this means that uh, we can constrain the equation of state very strongly. Okay, this is a summary of the gravitational waves from binary neutron star. So we, in this, we have uh, two interesting phases. Uh, one is the red in spiral phase. And uh, if uh, we can detect the major events within the distance of about 100 megaparsec, our red in spiral waveforms could be used to constrain the equation of state. And also, uh, if we uh, detect a gravitation wave uh, within the radius of about uh, 30 megaparsec, major waveform also could be used to constrain the equation of state. And of course, uh, if we have an ET, so it will be very strong to constrain the equation of states. Okay, so uh, I already used uh, 30 minutes. <laughs> okay, so. Now, now, so I'm going to talk on the uh, binary, black hole neutron star binary. Uh, this is an uh, uh, animation for black hole neutron star binary. And for this case, mass ratio is, uh, in, for, for both cases, uh, ass I assume that the black hole spin is zero. And in this case, mass ratio is very small, q equal to, so it's not very realistic. But anyway, so I found this simulation choosing this. And in this case, mass ratio is, is a slightly larger, uh, q equal three. And uh, I'll show you again. And uh, for this case, uh, tidal disruption, well, this is neutron star, tidal disruption occurs uh, before the neutron star is uh, swallowed by black hole. But on the other hand, uh, for this case, uh, tidal disruption uh, does not occur in a remarkable manner. So in this case, new disk is formed, but in this case, almost all the matter is swallowed into the black hole. And then, so uh, I like to say that uh, uh, if black hole spin is zero, uh, if uh, so, in this for this case, uh, if black, uh, mass ratio is uh, larger than three, tidal, it's not easy to have a tidal disruption event. So this me this means that uh, uh, for getting tidal disruption, spin effect is important, and this is a case. Uh, in this case, the uh, equation of state is the same, but mass ratio and the spins are different. For this case, uh, spins are fairly large, and in this case, for this case, uh, mass ratio is small, but the spin is uh, counter-rotating. And uh, in this case, if, if uh, A equals zero, in this case, uh, th neutron star is tidal disrupted. But uh, in, in the presence of counter-rotating spin, tidal disruption doesn't occur. And in this case, in the absence of the spin, tidal disruption does not occur. But with a high spin, tidal disruption occurs like this. 
and the disk is formed. So this shows that the uh, uh, spin effect is very important for tidal disruption. And also, uh, uh, radius of neutron star plays a very important role. So here, so I choose a very sm fairly small radius, but uh, if radius is uh, about 15 kilometer uh, tidal disruption occur for both cases. Anyway, so spin and the mass ratio and uh, uh, spin and the mass ratio and the neutron star radius are uh, important parameter. Uh, this is a, a rough, uh, very approximate condition for tidal disruption. And anyway, uh, tidal disruption occurs if the black hole tidal force is larger than the neutron star self gravity. And uh, this condition can be written like this. So, any, so I skipped uh, any calculation, but this is the final result. And the Q is, is a mass ratio to the black hole mass to the neutron star mass. And uh, R isco is a uh, final radius of the orbit. And this is a black hole mass. And uh, this is a neutron star radius and a neutron star mass. And alpha is uh, some factor of, uh, of uh, about uh, 1.5. And anyway, so this is a condition for tidal disruption. Uh, originally, this, is com this, is, uh, this comes from here, this one. And this shows that uh, if mass ratio should be as small as possible. And this shows that uh, uh, radius should be as large as possible to satisfy this one. And also, R isco should be uh, as small as possible. And uh, R isco can be s smaller if the spin is larger, larger and the uh, uh, orbit is uh, uh, corroded, so spin is a spin and the uh, orbital angular momentum is a parallel. And uh, so if we consider the car black hole, this is uh, in a range between one to nine, and uh, six is a uh, uh, case for uh, black hole spin zero. And then, so this shows that uh, uh, if, uh, so this, this shows that uh, for the tidal disruption, uh, low mass black hole is uh, favorable, and the large radius, large radius neutron star is also better, and also small black hole or spin is better, uh, uh, large, large black hole spin is better to, to decrease this one, yeah. Alpha is uh, some uh, uh, def deformation factor. So at the tidal deformation, yeah. Is it electricity? Yeah, and, yeah approximately electricity, yeah. But this is true only for coordinating black hole? Because, uh, for counterating black hole, with the increase of spin, this co will increase. So when your last point. Yeah, so this one. Yeah, I'll score, I'll score. So if the, no, uh, if, the rapidly, if we consider a rapidly spinning black hole, our risk is uh, as small as uh, a black hole. Retrograde, it is large. This is a non-rotating, this is a, so this is a co-rotating case. And uh, if a counter-rotating case, uh, uh, so, oh. I I I I pointing this one. Yes. So yeah yeah, yeah. sorry sorry yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 yeah. I'm pointing this one this one this one. This one is one two six nine, yeah. and six is a uh, uh, non rotating case. Okay anyway, so there are three parameters which determine the fate of the uh, this system. And uh, uh, what is interesting is that uh, tidal disruption is uh, uh, well reflected in the gravitational wave form. Uh, I saw two wave homes, and uh, in this case, uh, tidal disruption occur. In this case, uh, in the late in, for many uh, late in, in spiral orbits, uh, so uh, I, I should explain the green line. Green line is uh, the so, um, case uh, we consider as a point particle approximation. And uh, this shows that uh, uh, for many of the uh, late in spiral phase, two wave home approximately agree like this. But at some uh, point, tidal disruption occur, and then so two curves uh, deviate. Uh, this is due to the tide onset of the tidal disruption. And uh, uh, what is in interesting is that uh, uh, this, so we have uh, some uh, cut of frequency here. So frequency increase like this, but at some point, uh, amplitude of gravitation wave completely shut down. And uh, uh, this, uh, and uh, at, at the shutdown, so we have a typical, so characteristic uh, frequency of gravitation wave. Uh, this uh, reflects the tidal disruption event. Uh, by contrast, uh, if uh, tidal disruption doesn't occur, uh, gravitation wave is uh, very similar to the uh, major, that of the major binary black hole. So uh, in the final phase, we see the ring down wave home like this. 
And then, so, uh, so important point is that uh, if tidal disruption occur, uh, it, it is uh, reflected in gravitational wave frequency here. Uh, this is a, a spectrum of gravitational waves. Uh, so horizontal axis shows a frequency. So this is a frequency, and this is a spectrum. And for this case, uh, we consider as a non-spinning black hole, and uh, with a uh, mass is a uh, 1.35 uh, neutron star and a 2.7 black hole. And uh, so for all the curves, uh, these parameters are same, but the equation of state are different. And uh, for larger uh, radius, uh, we see something like this, but with the increase of the, uh, with, the, with the decrease of the so neutron star radius, curves shifted to, to the high, higher frequency part. And uh, this uh, cut of frequency reflects a tidal disruption event. And uh, this, this shows that if we can uh, determine the, this frequency, we will be able to constrain the uh, equation of state neutron star. But so for this case, uh, for this small uh, black hole mass case, uh, uh, frequency is rather high, so typically uh, about 2 kilohertz. So it's not easy to detect such gravitational wave using advanced LIGO. Of course, by ET, it's possible. But then, so in the presence of a uh, spin, so situation is uh, slightly improved. Uh, this is a Fourier spectrum for uh, this black hole neutron star binary. So I mean that the mass ratio is a fixed, neutron star mass is fixed, and also uh, equation of state is fixed. But a uh, black hole spin is changed. And uh, this shows that uh, with an uh, uh, increase of black hole spin, uh, this cut of frequency shifted to a lower frequency side like this. And also by the spin effect, uh, amplitude increase like this. So this shows that the uh, uh, presence of spin is uh, very important for observing this cutoff frequency. So in the increase of black hole spin, your uh, Cisco is shrinking, right? So the neutron star is able to approach closer? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, so yeah, you're right. But uh, for this case, uh, tidal disruption doesn't talk about this equation state. Uh, yeah, so, but for this case, uh, before the ISCO is reached, ISCO is very small. ISCO is reached, tidal disruption occur for this equation. So this is a, and uh, anyway, so this is a case for spin is uh, 0.75 and uh, 1.35, so Q equal 4 case. Uh, in this case, we show the, I show the uh, four di result for different equation state. And uh, you can see that the uh, cut of frequency for any equation of state is uh, larger than the uh, broad band type of the advanced diagnosis curve. So this shows the possibility that uh, uh, if gravitational waves from such system uh, is observed, so we may constrain the equation of state of a neutron star. Yeah, so recently, so uh, Ben Rackey and, uh, so any, so, so uh, Ben Rackey and the QTOC performed uh, more systematic uh, simulations, performing uh, more than 100 simulations and, uh, and uh, try to perform uh, some uh, uh, data analysis study. And uh, this is also the uh, Fourier spectrum. And so each curve shows a uh, 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 different numerical result, changing the uh, equation of state. And uh, any, so you can see the similar result. And by using this type of uh, 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 numerical result, they perform the uh, data analysis study. And uh, this is a, a, re a result of a Fisher analysis uh, using the hybrid waveform. And the horizontal axis shows a, a adiabatic index of a equation of state of a neutron star core. So typically it is uh, about three and uh, so it is typically between 2.5 to uh, 3.5. And uh, vertical axis shows a uh, uh, pressure at uh, this density. Uh, this is a uh, uh, typical pressure of a neutron star, usual, usual neutron star. And uh, uh, this shows that uh, uh, if this is a true equation of state, uh, in the one sigma level, so we can constrain this regime. And uh, here, the same for this. And then, so this shows that, uh, uh, sorry, but this is, uh, uh, in this analysis, uh, they consider the uh, ET, not advanced LIGO. But then, so by using ET, so equation of state can be constrained very strongly. Yeah. What are the blue dots? 
Uh, sorry? Uh, blue dot is a numerical relativity simulation point. So we performed, so they performed uh, this simulation for this analysis. Uh, this is a piecewise polytropic, piecewise polytropic state. So anyway, so this is a summary for gravitation wave from uh, black hole neutron binaries. So as I said, for the case that uh, uh, tidal disruption occur, gravitational wave have a <coughs> characteristic uh, feature and frequency, and it will be used to constrain the equation state. OK, so I only have 10 minutes. <laughs> I should skip this one. Anyway, so now so we can perform uh, many interesting simulations. So this is one example. So in this simulation, so in the previous simulation I showed, I performed the simulation uh, assuming the very simple equation state, so p-size polytropic equation state. But in this simulation, uh, effect of uh, neutrino emission and uh, final temperature effect and the transfer of neutrinos are taking into account. And uh, as a result, for example, we can uh, explore the uh, Newton luminosity. Uh, th this is a Newton luminosity in the equatorial plane. Also, this is a temperature in the equatorial plane. And you can see that uh, at the merger, uh, temperature increase due to the shock formation. And the highest temperature is uh, as high as uh, 50 <coughs> MeV. For fi so it's very high, much higher than the uh, typical temperature of a uh, stellar core collapse. Uh, such simulation is, n is not possible. <coughs> OK, I skip the detail of this. So you have 15 minutes, so we start late. So. Yeah, but I, I only have 10 minutes. You have 15. 15? Yeah. OK, 15, OK. Uh, OK, so this uh, similar simulation can be possible for black or neutron star binary. And I think that uh, Harald and uh, his collaborator performed the similar simulation, but now it's uh, possible for by two groups. OK, so in the rest of time, so I'd like to talk on the uh, electric mag electromagnetic counterparts of a binary neutron star merger and black hole neutron star binary, because uh, uh, it's a uh, uh, fairly new topics in this field. OK, so this is a summary of uh, uh, electromagnetic counterparts of a binary neutron star merger uh, described by Metzger and Berger last year. Uh, anyway, so after the merger of a binary neutron star or black hole neutron star binary, uh, black hole surrounded by a torus uh, would be formed. So this may be a massive neutron star in anyway. And uh, uh, so people has been, uh, have been uh, believing that uh, such a merger is associated with the uh, gamma ray bus like this. This is a picture of gamma ray bus. And uh, so, uh, so this means that if the gamma ray bus is a uh, uh, detected with the gravitational waves, so it's very interesting. So because uh, we can con conclude that, uh, oh, short gamma ray burst is the uh, central range of a short gamma ray burst is a uh, uh, binary neutron star merger. And al also, uh, we can um, get the confidence uh, that uh, uh, binary merger occurs. But uh, uh, the problem is that uh, it's not easy to detect a gamma ray burst. Uh, because the opening angle is very small. So typical opening angle is about 0.1 uh, radian for this event. So this means that uh, only from the, uh, around here, uh, this event can be observed. So we need uh, another, other uh, uh, electromagnetic counterparts. And uh, so, so, any, so there are two possibilities for other electromagnetic counterparts. Uh, one is uh, the so-called kilonova, and the other is uh, the so-called radio flare. For both are uh, uh, emitted by the uh, ejector from binary neutron star merger. So, so during merger, so most of the matter fall into a black hole and uh, accretion disk, but some material could escape from the, <coughs> this system. So such uh, ejector could shine by a kilonova and uh, radio flare. So and uh, any so the important point is that uh, so ejector is a uh, usually so ejector is almost spherical. So this means that uh, we can observe the uh, such a uh, uh, electromagnetic counterpart from any direction. This is an important point. Okay, so this is uh, uh, more details about the uh, uh, ejector and the electromagnetic counterpart. 
Uh, anyway, so after the merger of binary neutron stars and black hole neutron star binary, uh, neutron rich materials are ejected. And typically, so it's uh, because the merger event is uh, highly relativistic. So eject has a high velocity. High velocity means that uh, uh, 0.3 speed of light or 0.2 speed of light, something like that. And uh, uh, such uh, extreme uh, ejector could generate uh, observable electromagnetic signal via so Kirono-Macronova scenario or uh, long-term relay flare. And uh, so Kironova is a uh, Kironova or Macronova uh, is uh, uh, generated by the production and decay of uh, R plus heavy nuclei. Uh, this was originally uh, proposed by Lee and Pachinsky 15 years ago, and uh, recently a uh, study for this topic is very active. And the other is a uh, radio flare. Uh, this is uh, uh, excited uh, by the shock formation of the ejector. So, so I mean that. Uh, uh, by the, expansion, by the expansion of the uh, ejector, uh, ejector eventually interact with the interstellar matter. Then so shocks are formed, and then uh, it shines. Uh, this is uh, our, the so-called radio flare. Any so I will show you, I will uh, tell you uh, some more details. And uh, this is a uh, uh, picture for our process. Uh, this is a picture composed of the proton number of nu neutron number of some nuclei. And the black dot uh, is a uh, stable nuclei. And uh, this, uh, uh, this color shows uh, unstable nuclei. And uh, anyway, so ejector is a uh, neutron rich. And this means that uh, it's easy to make a, a heavy nuclear gathering uh, neutron rich material. And uh, this red uh, curves show a uh, uh, possible uh, evolution process of the heavy nuclei. So, anyway, so it's uh, very neutron rich and uh, neutron rich, so neutron rich materials form something like this. And uh, also, this has, this has been uh, proven that uh, this is possible by many uh, so calculations. And then, so by the uh, R plus, uh, so plus heavy nuclei is uh, eventually formed after the beta decay or fission. So, after the, any, so along this path, eventually, so very heavy nuclei is formed. But it is uh, highly unstable against the beta decay or fission. And then, so by repeating the beta decay, so it eventually leads to a stable nuclei. And uh, for example, this is a uran. Uh, uran is a uh, 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 generated by, produced by the R process. And also uh, gold and the platinum and uh, silver are also uh, uh, generated by the R this R process heavy nuclear production. And then, yeah, so uh, important point is that uh, it eventually decay by a beta decay or fission. Then so uh, heat is generated. And this means that uh, inside the ejector, uh, much heat is generated and uh, it could be a, a source of the uh, electromagnetic counterpart. So I skip, uh, I skip uh, uh, all the details, but anyway, so Lee and Pachinsky estimate that the uh, 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 typical uh, duration of the, this event is uh, about uh, three days if mass is uh, about this value and uh, uh, velocity is about 30% of the speed of light and the kappa is uh, opacity of the ejector. And this is a uh, maximum luminosity. Uh, maximum luminosity is uh, about uh, this value for the assumed mass and velocity and opacity. And then, yeah, so this value means that uh, as follows. So this means that uh, absolute magnitude M, large M is uh, minus 15. And this means that uh, at 100 megaparsec, uh, apparent magnitude is uh, uh, 20 magnitude and uh, for uh, 200 megaparsec, this, this value. So, uh, this can be observed. This is a uh, very faint, but still it's, it's observable by the uh, latest uh, facilities. So motivated by uh, this uh, simple scenario, so a uh, so number of people uh, started uh, detailed calculation. Uh, these are Japanese guys, and uh, they also started a calculation this year, a detailed study of a. Uh, uh, Kironova scenario this year, and uh, uh, this is uh, the result. 
for the binary neutral star merger at uh, 200 megaparsec. And uh, this, this, for example, so this is a, a, a luminosity curve for a different uh, frequency of a uh, electromagnetic signal. This is R band, uh, this is a R band, uh, this is a G, K band. Any, any, so this is a red, uh, this is a far red band. And uh, th they show that the uh, uh, typical duration is uh, a few days, as predicted by uh, Lee and Paczynski. And also typical magnitude is uh, about uh, 23 and 24 apparent magnitude for this distance. Uh, but uh, they also show that uh, uh, this typical magnitude uh, depends strongly on the mass of the ejector and so on and so on. But anyway, so uh, this, for example, so, so focus on this one. So this shows that the uh, duration is uh, about one week. So this means that not very short. One week is uh, fairly long. And also, uh, magnitude is not very small. So this is a, a detectable limit by, for example, one meter size telescope, and this is a detectable limit by four meter size telescope and a five, eight meter telescope. So this shows that, uh, for example, by using a five, five, eight, eight meter size scale telescope, so uh, electromagnetic counterpart uh, would be detected. You, even if mass is uh, as small as this value. And uh, also, uh, two weeks ago, there, is a, there was an interesting event, so this gamma ray bus. Uh, this is a gamma ray bus, but uh, after one week later of this event, uh, uh, these guys, and uh, also these guys observed uh, uh, this event using a Hubble Space Telescope. And uh, this is uh, this one point is uh, just a result of the Hubble Space Telescope. And uh, if this, and uh, other points are uh, observational result by other telescope. And anyway, so this point is a uh, match with uh, the Japanese guys' calculations. Well, so so this this suggests that uh, this uh, event may associate with uh, Kironova. But uh, it's not clear, but uh, because uh, this may be the usual afterglow of the gamma ray burst. But anyway, so this point uh, does not contradict with the Kironova scenario. So this means that uh, Kironova, Kironova has, been, has, been, has not been uh, observed yet, but uh, uh, this observation uh, opens a new window for observing yeah, Kironova. Uh, this is a. Uh, this is about uh, uh, four, uh, one point four gigaparsec. Right. Yeah. So, so it's much oh yes. Oh, in this case, magnitude is very low. So, twenty-six or something like that. But by Hubble telescope, it's still possible. Yeah. But only one point. <laughs> only one point. Unfortunately. And also, uh, radio flare. So radio flare scenario was uh, proposed by Naka and Piran, and uh, so I skipped uh, any details. So for this event, the uh, duration is much longer, so about uh, 10 years or something like that. But uh, uh, luminosity so is uh, very high, and uh, for the planned uh, facilities like this, so such event could be detected they, they, as they uh, suggested. But anyway, so there are many uncertainties. Uh, one serious uncertainty was uh, opacity. So because uh, so we, we now consider the uh, R process heavy elements, but we don't know the opacity for such a uh, heavy element. But uh, recently, uh, Kaysen and uh, Tanaka uh, performed the detailed analysis of opacity, and uh, so they clarify that the opacity is very high. So I think that this uh, question was partly answered. But still, there are many uh, uncertainties. For example, uh, in the uh, typical uh, evaluation, explanation for this type of uh, flux, uh, I, uh, we assume the very rough number, something like that. But uh, uh, it's not very clear. So to clarify such number, uh, numerical relativity <coughs> simulation is necessary. So numerical relativity simulation is necessary for estimating mass and also speed of ejector and uh, also ejector configuration and so on and so on. So, anyway, so this is a new field in which numerical relativity play a very important role. So, the, so due to this reason, so we just started the uh, study for the ejector of a 
binary Newton Samaja and the black hole Newton Samaja. Uh, this is uh, one example. So, any, so we performed a similar simulation uh, to that uh, shown in a previous slide. But we follow the ejector very carefully in this simulation. Any, so after the merger, shock is formed. And by the shock, uh, matter, pardon? Oh, yes, yeah, so uh, here, so I use a uh, very uh, approximate treatment, treatment of uh, shock heating, but uh, anyway, so uh, using, the, equation yeah, equation state is a uh, very rough uh, ideal, ideal gas equation state. But it is, it is calibrated, so which, which is gamma, so adiabatic index is uh, calibrated to a uh, realistic equation state. Yeah. And anyway, so shock is uh, formed and uh, because a uh, massive neutron star exerts a uh, torque to the surrounding material and the uh, mass is ejected. So any so mass ejection occur uh, by a shock plus torque exerted by massive neutron star. This is a uh, uh, animation, so animation for a very small region. So for this case, uh, radius is at almost uh, uh, 500, uh, uh, 150 kilometer. So next one is a uh, uh, animation for wider view. In this case, uh, radius is about a uh, thousand kilometer. And then, so for this uh, animation, merger setting about uh, at 11 milliseconds. So after mil 11 milliseconds, something happens in this animation. So, <coughs> so any so merger occurs, and then mass ejection happens. So this is mass ejection. And you can see that uh, this is an uh, equatorial plane, and this is an uh, XZ plane. So you can see that uh, mass ejection occurs in a sp fairly spherical manner. And uh, by measuring the speed of this head, so we can measure the maximum value of the velocity, and the maximum velocity in this case is uh, very high, so 80% of the speed of light. And the average velocity is about 20 to 30% of the speed of light. And uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, mass of ejector as a function of the time. So this shows that the uh, uh, total eject mass, ejected mass, depends strongly on the uh, equation of state. For uh, uh, optimistic one, so mass become about uh, one percent of a solar mass. or well, this is large enough. But for a pessimistic man, so for pessimistic means that uh, if the uh, equation of state is uh, very stiff, radius is, is very large, uh, value become uh, about 0.1% uh, of a solar mass. This is not large enough. For this case, it's very difficult to observe the uh, uh, electromagnetic counterpart. But for this case, it's possible. So any Earlier, earlier suggested that if you have a soft equation of state, the dilute of it happens inside this core. Uh, no, so in this case, no east coast, so binary neutron star. Okay. Yeah, binary neutron star, yeah. Mainly, so, result depends strongly on the equation of state. So, I don't know, yeah, we don't know what happens because we don't know the equation of state. Also, uh, we just started a uh, uh, study for uh, mass ejection of the, mass ejection from black hole neutron star binary. Uh, in this case, we choose a uh, black hole mass. Uh, in a realistic value, but uh, in the presence of a high spin, uh, neutron stars are disrupted like this, and the uh, disk is formed. Anyway, so what is interesting is that the uh, disk is not stationary. The disk, disk is uh, highly non-stationary in the early phase. So this is uh, animation for ma uh, mass ejection. Here, uh, I show the material with the escape, only escape velocity. Okay, let me show you again. So, and uh, this is uh, uh, animation in the XY plane, and this is animation XZ plane and uh, YZ plane. And then, yes, so uh, mass is ejected. And uh, in this case, uh, morphology is uh, highly non spherical. So in the equatorial plane, it's uh, almost spherical, but uh, in the XG and YZ plane, it's uh, non-spherical at all. So it's, uh, so I mean that it's uh, something like a 
and the bam kuchen sweep or something like that. So, so in, in your morphology depends strongly on the type of the uh, merger. In the merger, merger binary neutron star morphology is almost spherical, but in the black hole neutron star binary, merger is highly non spherical. And the non spherical, non -spherical so property of, uh, so, uh, any so morphology is very important because uh, uh, time scale and uh, luminosity is modified by the morphology. So I don't talk about this one in detail. Okay, so any so, uh, so mass ejection is a, a very new subject in numerical relativity. And uh, in the first step, so we performed a, a, a simulation using a very simple equation state. And we found that uh, that uh, scenario proposed by uh, Lee and Pachinsky is basically okay. So roughly okay. And we, we, so I found that the total mass and the energy and uh, so on is a, a reasonable value and uh, as which is a, which approximately agree with the prediction by Lee and Pachinsky. So this means that uh, the scenario is basically okay. But uh, uh, we have to do uh, many things more. So for example, uh, in our simulations, in our present simulations, uh, magnetic field and the neutron winds are not taken into account. Uh, so some people suggest that uh, these play an important role. So this means that we have to take into account such uh, details. And also, uh, as an advanced step, so we have to take into account the uh, R process calculation in numerical relativity simulation. And this is a challenge, but uh, this will be very important and uh, this will be very interesting to explore the uh, possibility of electromagnetic counterpart. Okay, anyways. So this is a summary of this talk. I'm sorry, I, I spent many times on anyway. And uh, anyway, so uh, now, so I can say that uh, many systematic simulations of binary neutron star and black hole neutron star coalescence are ongoing. And uh, now, so there are many gravitational waveforms uh, in hand, so many catalogs of gravitational waveforms. The next step is that uh, to model this gravitational wave. So this is also ongoing in some uh, people, by some people. And also uh, advanced numerical simulations are uh, taking into account the, taking into account the uh, neutron emissions and the radiation transfer and the magnetic fields are now ongoing. But uh, uh, this is, uh, these simulations are still in a, a preliminary stage and uh, in the future we have to perform a more detailed modeling and we have to perform more resolved simulation for this subject. And also, uh, I, as I said, uh, study for electromagnetic counterpart is a new field and uh, which should be developed uh, in the next five years or something like that. So thank you very much. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. Thank, 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 you thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, this is a, this one is a neutral luminosity as a function of the uh, time, and uh, th this is a time at the merger. At the merger, uh, this is temperature. Temperature in increase drastically, so maximum temperature become uh, several ten MeV or something like that. In during this stage, uh, luminosity is uh, several times ten to fifty-three Eriks per second, so it is much higher than the luminosity in the supernovae. And uh, anyway, so in the presence of the hypermassive neutron star, uh, luminosity remains disorder. But these are for all flavors or for some specific? Uh, in, in this case, we take an, into account uh, all flavor. All flavor. Some we take account of yeah, neutron, anti neutron, and other neutrinos. And then so it also for the average, I mean, the, the steam mass is the average energies of the neutrinos or the stars? And what is steam mass? This is this temperature? Is this temperature. Is the temperature off? Temperature. Uh, this is temperature matter, not matter. Exactly, right. So, but, but, but what about the average energies or the temperature of the neutrinos? Ah, so it's a similar. So several similar. ten, several ten MeV. Yeah, hmm. slightly higher than the supernova neutrinos. But these, but these events are not galactic. Ah, uh, no, no, no. So it's very difficult to detect. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. So this is a factor of ten higher than the compass supernova. Ah, factor of several. Factor of several. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, maybe a few, yeah. 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 What's the contribution of R process system in this binary neutron system? What's the contribution of R process system in this binary neutron system? Oh, in binary neutron system? Oh, in binary neutron system. Oh, in binary neutron system. Oh, in binary neutron the so, of the yeah, so, so, yeah, the yeah, it is, it is large enough. So, any so neutron star merger occurs uh, every about a hundred thousand years or something like that. So, every, so this means that every hundred thousand years, about a <laughs> point oh one solar mass is ejected per galaxy. By, by, per galaxy. So, it, it is large, it is large enough. So, it's comparable to the uh, so total amount of the. Uh, our element in our galaxy. So it is composite. It's magic number, but it, it's comparable. Yeah. You show some uh, official plot, right? Uh, when they're talking about how easy or difficult it might be to discriminate between different equations of state. Um, Which one? Any lack here to have that work? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the question is that uh, you have to have a certain amount of uh, confidence that did they also vary in other parameters, not just the equations, yeah, but also you're right, you're the right. masses yeah. and spinning? Yeah, you're because right. there could be covariances between those errors in those no, parameters. No, 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 you're right. No, no, no. So, yeah, maybe so. So estimation is much larger. <coughs> so it, it, this is a very so ideal analysis, so fixing the mass and spin and uh, so on so on. <coughs> Thank you very much.